Today we're gonna to do a 30 minute legs and abs barbell and dumbbell workout. You can do this as a follow along with me. For this workout, I'll start off with the barbell loaded to 40 kilos, that's about 88 pounds. And I'll have some dumbbells, that'll be 10 kilos each, 22 pounds each. But first up, we're gonna kick it off with a brief bodyweight warm up. We're gonna do four exercises in this warm up, 30 seconds each for two rounds just using your body weight. We're gonna start off with a classic, doing some squats. If you start your feet about shoulder width apart, slight turnout, and we're gonna keep the knees out nice and wide to match your foot angle. So squatting down and back up. Nice slow tempo on the way down. We're aiming to sit your glutes down between the heels maximizing the stretch of the ankles, even using your shin muscles to pull your knees forwards and out over your toes. From here, we'll be going into more of a hip hinge action, doing some good mornings. So hands behind the ears, we're gonna hinge at the hip, scooting back up, so you can unlock the knees where we're aiming so relatively straight legs, keeping the shoulder blades pulled together, holding a nice line through the upper back. I'll link this into some leg swings. So you're gonna hold onto the bar if you've got one, or onto a wall. I'm just gonna do a lateral swing. We're gonna stay on one side for 30 seconds. So you're just coming slightly across the body, and then nice and wide, up and out, trying to keep your torso relatively still as you're swinging out. Straight to the other side. So you're just opening out that groin with a nice dynamic stretch. If you're warming up, it's best to use dynamic stretches, not static stretches. So that means any movement-based stretch. We're gonna go straight back into squats after this for that second round. So straight into it, squatting down, slight turn out to the feet. And then your knees should be turned out to match that toe angle, keeping quite an upright squat position, maximizing the stretch at the ankles, hitting full depth without any excessive collapsing of the tailbone. Hands behind the ears, hinge for that good morning, back through. So I'm unlocking the knees, but then keeping relatively straight legs. Rather than thinking about leaning forwards, imagine someone's pulling your hips backwards. For those lateral swings, you can just do it standing up like this. If you are, Although it looks a bit funny, if you do the arms in the opposite direction, I find it really helps with balance. Obviously, if you've got a rack or a wall to hold on to, you can do it like that. But I just want to show you that it can be done without, with a little bit of balance. On to the other side. a little bit like a West End shell, a very bad one. So just opening those hips out nice and wide. Just a passive swing across the front, you don't need to come too far across the front. Okay, so you've got some time to load up your barbell. Mine's already loaded up to 40 kilos. That's about 88 pounds total weight, so that's including the weight of the bar, and 10 kilos per dumbbell. That's about 22 pounds per dumbbell. You need to use whatever's right for you. We're gonna be doing 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 
four exercises for three rounds, starting with a barbell back squat. So if that helps you to choose the weight, feel free to pause the video if you need some more time loading that up. So 40 seconds, continuous reps with a nice controlled tempo. So slowly down, knees out, hit your full depth. The bar should be resting on your traps. Don't put it on your neck. If it's too high up, it'll be uncomfortable on your neck bones. So you want it a little bit lower down. If you can, squeeze your shoulder blades together and have your elbows directly under the bar, but that will depend on your shoulder mobility. Always finish your rep. Okay, we're gonna go into an ab exercise next. So if you lie on your back, on the floor, or on your mat, we're gonna do a tuck crunch. It's gonna be in a nice open position, then tucking up to touch your ankles. So you can do this crunch variation like this, where my lower back is staying on the floor. But if you want a more advanced variation, you can come right up like this onto the tailbone. If you've got a spare plate, you can use that for this next exercise. You're gonna do a dumbbell cyclist squat. So put your plate down. Don't worry if you haven't got one, you can do it without. You're gonna hold the dumbbell. You're gonna go narrow foot. You're gonna do basically a goblet squat. The thing that makes this a cyclist squat is that using that heel elevation helps us to keep a more upright squat position and using this narrower foot stance will also make it more of a quad emphasized squat and the cyclist squat name comes because this targets a quad muscle called your VMO down the inside here and that's used a lot in cycling. If you haven't got the plates you can just do a narrow foot goblet squat. Okay, you're gonna need one dumbbell actually for this ab exercise. We're gonna hold a slight reaching crunch position and then we're gonna do leg raises. So I'm staying up in a partial crunch and then I'm lowering the legs with control, making sure my lower back doesn't come off the mat, but then as I roll the legs up, I'm letting the tailbone come slightly off the floor. If your neck's getting achy, you can do this with your head on the floor, it's fine. I like to have my head and shoulder blades slightly off. I find it's easier to keep my abs engaged that way. Well done. So there's round one of three done in this first section. There's two main sections to this workout, but we'll be changing the exercises for the second section. So if you found that too easy or too hard, feel free to pause the video and change the weight. But if you've got it about right, let's get ready to go for round two. Make sure your heels stay on the floor. You want even pressure between the inside and the outside of your foot. I like to 
slightly grip the floor with my feet, almost like you're squeezing the floor, helping contract that arch of the foot. Make sure the knees aren't collapsing to the centre. Get onto that top crunch now. So I don't mind if you want to do that smaller crunch variation or if you want to come all the way up onto the tailbone, whatever suits you. I'm going to go for this crunch style variation. Although typically it's a little bit easier, I actually find to get a better ab workout like this. Because I don't lose tension on the abs. Especially if when you're in this open position here, you're making sure the lower back is staying nice and braced flat to the floor. Touching the ankles as you draw the knees towards the chest. If you've got something to elevate your heels on for this cyclist squat, it does make it work a little bit better. It just gives you a better range of motion. But if not, as I said, just do a narrow stance goblet squat. So knees coming forwards over the toes. It's absolutely fine to do that, as long as you keep your heels on the floor for this or on the plates. Really exaggerate that upright position. So it should be way more upright than your barbell back squat angle. And it's more of a quad emphasized squat, as the back squat has a lot of involvement of the glutes or hamstrings and even the lower back slightly. Always finish your rep, even if the beep is gone. to those engaged leg raises. So holding a small crunch, crunch position. I want you to focus more attention on the lowering phase, keeping ab tension, not relaxing your lower back into an arch. As I said, if you need to put your head on the floor, that's fine. Well done. Two rounds done. We've got one more to go, and then we'll be switching up the exercises. <sighs> Tempo wise, doing about three to four counts down, and then one to two counts up. So it'd be one two, three, four, one, two. Onto that top crunch. I don't actually recommend walking backwards to re-rack away. I've just got the rack behind me because it stops the racks getting in the way of the shot on the video. But if you are squatting with a rack, generally you should face the rack and walk forwards to re-rack the bar.
grab that heel elevation if you've got something. It could even be a book if you're at home. It doesn't have to be plates. Well done, we've got a minute off. I'm gonna lower the weight on my bar down to 30 kilos, which is about 66 pounds total weight. And we're gonna do a front squat with this. Now, the front squat can be a little tricky with the wrist and shoulder flexibility. So I'll give you an alternative if that's gonna be an issue. You can do a double dumbbell front squat instead of the barbell. But there are a few different ways you can hold the bar with a front squat. So feel free to opt for a conventional front squat position. I'm actually gonna do a crossed over one because I find it a little bit easier on my wrist. But whether you've chosen the dumbbells, conventional front squat, or this crossed over one that I'm doing, to get yourself ready to go. Same tempo as the back squat. The front squat should have slightly more upright torso angle than your back squat. Maybe somewhere between your cyclist squat and your back squat angle. The bar should be spreading the weight right across so it's in contact with the top of my collarbone, but also spreading the weight across the shoulders. You should be relaxing your shoulders down. Okay, I'm gonna do a nice classic core exercise, the dead bug now. So you're just lying on your back. 90 degree angle at the knees, straight arms. We need to drop opposites down. Bring it back to the center, rebrace, and then drop the other side down. The whole time, you are trying to maintain nice pressure with the lower back on the floor. It'll be tempting as you open out to arch the back off. But good core strength is about maintaining a good spine position under tension. This is working. Transverse abs, which act like a corset, holding your torso still. Great job. This next one might be a new one for you. You're gonna take the dumbbell like a goblet squat. You're gonna do a narrow stance split squat. So it's basically all your weight's gonna be on the front leg. Your back toe is on the floor. And we're gonna squat down. 
We're only doing 20 seconds per side and there's no transition time, we'll just switch it straight. So all my weight is in this front leg and the back foot is only maybe six inches behind the front heel. And we're trying to change, change legs now. I'm trying to minimize the assistance of that back foot. Let's tag an extra rep onto this. It's a little late with my switch. Great job. So a tricky one, but we've got three rounds to perfect that. So don't worry if you didn't quite get it first time round. On to some alternating V-ups. So the hands are gonna go every time with the torso and the legs are gonna alternate. I'm keeping a fixed knee angle, slightly bent leg, but trying to keep that same bend throughout the whole rep. My upper body is reaching up and off the floor and keeping my lower back on the floor for this. And I'm trying to maintain a nice hollow hold position when I open out, almost doing this similar brace to the dead bug, avoiding any excessive arching of the lower back. Great job. So take a rest. You might want to opt for the dumbbells. If you're having a problem with the wrists on this front squat, go for this. I'll show you a conventional front squat grip. So it'd be more like this. I struggle a little bit with the mobility on this, but this is a more classic way to do it. Onto that dead bug. So it's all about quality on this. Doing more reps is not necessarily better. In fact, you're probably doing a better job if you're going slower and bracing harder instead. Your head can be on the floor for dead bugs. You don't need to have your head off. Realize this is a bit of a coordination nightmare when you're first learning it, but I promise once you've done it four times, it'll become a lot more natural. Okay, onto those narrow, split squats. So I'll show you from the side. Back foot's only slightly behind the front foot. I'm shifting all the weight into the front leg. I'm treating it like a single leg squat on the front leg. I'm trying to stay nice and upright. That back leg staying on the toes, just there for a slight bit of assistance. Switch front leg straight into it. Make sure that front knee isn't collapsing in. Good job. Hopefully managed to perfect that a little bit more on that second round. We've got one more. Go at these on the third and final round. 
But let's get these alternating V-ups done. Just remember, arms and torso coming every time, legs alternating. Great job. This workout is actually part of a longer barbell series called the Lift 2.0 series. It's 16 30 minute workouts over four weeks. So if you're already on that, well done, keep it going. And if you're not on that yet, you can go back to day one after this workout and you'll find the program guide that you can download for free in the description of this video. Maintaining that nice upright posture. Keeping good posture through the upper back. Okay, let's get on to that final set of that narrow split stance squat. So back toe a few inches behind the front heel, holding it in a goblet squat position, all the weights in the front leg, minimizing the help from that back foot. Trying to stay quite upright with our squat position, avoiding any inward claps that front knee. Onto the last set of the whole workout. Got those V ups. Let's make sure we stay nice and engaged with the core in this open position.
That's it. Workout complete. Thanks so much for joining me for that. Let me know in the comments below how did you find that workout and where in the world are you following along from. Here's the next day in that Lift 2.0 series. Here's a quick cool down stretch if you want to do that right now. And if you're not already on the Lift 2.0 series, then download your free program guide in the description of this video. See you again soon for another workout.